and good evening. My name is Vadim, and I'm going to be your late night DJ. I'm just kidding, because tonight we have a special occasion. We have um, an interview once again, and this time it's going to be with the Buddha of European Go, with a person who has probably the calmest style ever, who <laughs> probably literally never dies with the groups and just always plays the peaceful options possible. The one and only, we have the interview with Artyom Kachinovsky, second dumb professional from Ukraine. Uh, let's start with your style, because, like, how did you develop this style? How did you, at, at least before, it was so simple and calm and peaceful. How does it work like this? I would call my style natural. So it means, like, um, uh, I don't try to complicate things when, when it's not needed or... I don't try to avoid complications. So mostly, usually when I play, I, sometimes I ask myself what is the what is the natural development uh, with the next moves. Actually, I know that uh, from the past, uh, many players are still thinking that uh, I'm very good at peaceful go and not good at fighting. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, um, I think that uh, it's actually it's totally wrong. So. Uh, uh, most games that I lose, I lose in uh, in some peaceful game when there is just uh, territories and nothing else. But uh, so if you if somebody wants to beat me, then uh, it's 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 exactly opposite as most people think. It's uh, better to not to go into fighting and to try to play some peaceful game. Let, let me let me just get my uh, my notebook. I'm gonna write it down <laughs> how to beat Artem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't tell this to other top players. I won't. I won't. No, no. Never, never. But yeah, but I know that uh, Alexander Dinerstein is famous for trying to adapt, trying to change. Uh, like with, with some players, he will play peacefully. With some players, he will attack more. And I think that his idea of playing with you is always, has always been, hmm, you can't play a peaceful game with Artem. Is that, that, it's not going to work. You have to like it's fight. It's a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Such such a big mistake. So he actually has to play a like Lee Chan Ho kind of end game <laughs> and just yes. snatch the victory from you at the last at the last moment. It uh, turned out that uh, when you always try to follow like uh, always try to play peacefully, then at some point you start to play too passive, and um, mm. then you start to fall behind. If the opponent is strong enough to to play well so uh, when you when you reach some level it's it's not enough only to to follow some one single way of playing then you have to be more flexible and sometimes you have to take influence sometimes territory it all depends on, on the position so uh, Ksenia is asking um how much time artem spends on go during the day actually nowadays i i don't study go much because I, i'm busy with with my go project and uh, but maybe on average we can count something like one hour per day something like this and and usually this is uh, reviewing my games with the ai only one hour per day i think a lot of the people around the world are going to be disappointed right now <laughs> they did not expect this answer they expected you you would say well i i spend at least 10 hours every day sometimes 11 <laughs> one, one hour hmm you became a pro like like six years ago, right? 2016? Yes. Six yes. years ago. So um, what, what has changed since then? Like, do people recognize you now in Ukraine? When you walk down the streets, people are like, oh, this is, this is Arta. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Never. Never? Well, actually, a few times it happens that uh, I was sitting in a park and then somebody would be walking and say, are you Artem Kachanovsky? But that was some Go player who never <laughs> went to, to a tournament. Yeah, I worked five years as, uh, as a programmer, and uh, all these five years I was between go and uh, and working. So uh, I used all of my vacation to go to tournaments. Oh my god! For example, so I never really had normal vacation, and uh, you know, it's uh, actually uh, it's hard to do two serious things at once. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, for example, I go to tournaments, and I uh, if you are a strong player and you try hard, then tournament is very exhausting. Yeah. And you and I come tired after tournament, and then next go, day go I to work. go to, to do my job of programmer. So uh, for five years, I was um, thinking, not really five years, but maybe three last years, I was 
thinking every day if it's uh, worth continuing with this programming or not. Um, yeah, and then uh, it was not easy decision, but at some point I decided so that uh, why not to try to only with Go, especially that I was one year already professional player. Yeah, but I, 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 I heard that before, before you became a professional, uh, you even considered, you even thought about maybe like just going for a regular job. Just uh, just doing the job and stop playing Go. Have you ever thought about this? No, it's uh, no? it's very hard to stop playing Go when, when you reach such level. You you don't really think about such things. Maybe uh, there are a few players who actually quit Go, but uh, I think I, I didn't have a reason to quit Go. But I had uh, I had some period uh, <clears throat> when uh, somehow I couldn't really improve and uh, didn't feel like playing. So maybe some. Around two years, uh, I had when I had some kind of depression in my go life. Mm. Yeah, and then but then everything uh, started to be fine after I became professional. Actually, when <laughs> I went for professional qualification tournament, I didn't even want much, so much to become professional. Like, and I think this is uh, one of the reasons why I, why I succeeded in that tournament because when you, when you come. And you don't really expect anything, and you you are not nervous, and then you just play your game, and uh, in such case, it's easier to win. Somebody's asking again. Uh, Mr. Serial is asking. Uh, Artyom, do you have maybe have some tips how to keep uh, your own style uh, when reviewing with the AI each of our games? What I would say that uh, the best way to keep your own style is to play only what you understand. Let's say even is even the flying dagger when you if you uh, study it and you watch some variations and you understand why why they play these moves if if you have this understanding then it's good to play it but if you just uh, memorize it and then yeah. try to reproduce it on the board then this uh, breaks your style. <laughs> All right, then maybe let, let's let's take a look at the pictures. We have some pictures of of you and, um, and you know in Europe and you as a child. Here we go. Yeah, I, I was at the World Youth Go Championship um, in in Shanghai, in China. It was my first World Youth Championship. I, I think I was uh, 10 years of age at that point. And uh, they, they write about me in the newspaper because I managed to take uh, place uh, fourth place. It was uh, like the, the biggest sensation of, uh, of the competition. Um, I remember that I, I played a tournament and... Uh, at some point, I had a game against Five Dan from from Singapore, I think, and he was much much stronger than me. But uh, I was a very technical player, like uh, I, I was good at reading. So at some point, he got careless, and I got cut off a huge group of him, and then I killed it, <laughs> and he and he was forced to resign. So I beat a Five Dan to enter the final of this tournament. And the final was for the strongest uh, for the four players who had the best result including me. So I was, I think, third Q at that point. Wow. And I ent entered this final of world championship. And so I think this is why they, they yeah. write about And Of course, yeah, like a three Q beating some Singaporean five done. Because that's crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. So, you know, when you are so small, like 10 years old, then you, you come to some tournament and you become friends with everyone very fast. Yeah. The language barrier doesn't matter. So you can imagine that no one of us spoke English, but we be, somehow I became good friends with this Korean player. And uh, of course, he was much beat, much stronger than me, and he beat me. But uh, I think I still remember his name. It's uh, uh, I think it's uh, Kang Yutek from South Korea, who became now one of the top Korean professionals. Of course, I mean, of course. <laughs> have you ever counted how many cups you have right now? <laughs> like uh, no, actually, I don't keep them at my home. Uh, my parents like to collect my cups and um, <laughs> yeah, in, in their apartment, they have a room that is uh, full of cups. Uh, uh, there are shelves, uh, cups on the shelves, cups uh, in the wardrobe. But uh, no, it's, uh, I, I don't count them anymore. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. A whole room full of cups. This is the same tournament. Another. I took the second place and my compatriot uh, Igor Zaitsev, he took the first place. It huh. was uh, it was painful to lose to him because he was actually much weaker to me. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, uh, when we played, I was too too confident in myself, and I started to attack his group. 
that was about to die. Ah. And he started to run with his group and to enter my, my territory oh. and run through all my territory. Classic. In the end, he, he somehow made the second eye. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I lost to him. And I remember that even after the game, I was crying. Uh, it, it was a tragedy for me. Yeah, we have a couple more. Oh, this is, this is uh, you against uh, like the European team against China, right? Yeah, this is a, this is very cool memories. We, we were in China uh, at the C League, and you can see the European players meditating before the <laughs> yeah against the Chinese kids who are about to beat them. Did you? Yeah, I, I remember I saw some of those games, and I was it was so amazing. It was C League, which means it's like it's there's A, B, and there's a C, right? Yes. And, and the Chinese kids, and how, what was the score? Do you remember? Well, uh, I, can, I can tell you the statistics that we played three C leagues, uh -huh. and in each C league there are, I think, seven games. Okay. So from from twenty one matches, we won only one. Whoa! <laughs> oh and, my uh, god! I I know that um, maybe maybe I shouldn't say this, but that match was against a team of girls. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's okay. It's so a... I can tell you that the, the level is very good at the at the Chinese C League. And so, um, so they're pro uh, like all of your opponents are professionals, right? Uh, not all. Sometimes on the on the board number four, there can be amateur. Let's, let's take a break and play a very very short game. Uh, so we were gonna play uh, a nine by nine of Kema Go. Okay, sure, <laughs> let's, let's try. All right, let's do this. Now Kema. Uh, obvious. Obvious choice. Mm -hmm. You can't connect and I can't capture. <laughs> what kind of situation is that? Wait, don't tell me I cannot block. I cannot block. All right. Black I wins. I resigned this. I think you, you did this interview uh, maybe some, a few years ago. Maybe some five years ago. And you said at that time that we are very, very far away from Asian professionals. And that maybe you, you said that if you played a game against Asian professionals on two stones handicap, you would lose all of them. And even with three stones, you felt that mm, it's, not, like, it's not safe. It's not guaranteed that they can still win. So do you think this is changing? I think we definitely became stronger in the last few years since I gave that interview. Um, but I think that most probably still two stones wouldn't be enough for us. Like, um, maybe we would win some games on two stones, like one game from 10. Mm, but if they try really hard, then um, I think the difference is a bit bigger than two stones. In, if we take uh, the top European professional and the top Asian professional. Yeah, I, I was, I, I was going to say, well, this is crazy. Come on. No, two stones, or three stones. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of handicap. But then uh, have you watched those uh, games on uh, Fox Go server where fine art or some crazy strong AI gives like five handicap? Yeah, the fine art can, I think it usually gives two or three stones to the top Asian professionals, Yeah, which, which means that it's, uh, it's very hard, but. Yeah, I was also thinking before that, for example, how can you lose on four stones handicap? Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, and then once I tried to play against Katago on four stones, and I realized it actually four stones is not that much. <laughs> really? So have you have you been experimenting with this? Have you played a some bit. games? A bit, not much, but I think I, I won on five stones and lost on four stones. Something like that. And three stones, it's no, no chance against uh, AI. Uh, somebody's asking, um, but he's talking of top, uh, not average Asian professionals, right? When you were saying that. Mm, of course, of course not. But uh, average professionals, uh, mm, it's hard to say what is the average professional in Asia. But uh, I think uh, we European professionals, we are, we are stronger than the, the weakest Asian professionals, of course. But, uh, yeah, we, we should be weaker than the average. So have you ever thought of uh, maybe moving to a different country then? It's, it's not really about uh, that it's hard to go from Ukraine because from Ukraine there are many flights to Europe and um, it's not a problem that uh, I, I live in Ukraine. Uh, just uh, that uh, we, we have two kids and uh, uh, for my, they are very small and for my wife it's hard to, to stay with two of them at once. 
So if I go to tournaments and uh, she has hard times and uh, yeah, so it's, uh, does does your wife uh, does your wife play Go? Yes, she she is a Go player and uh, we have a so Go family. Oh, you mean your children? Uh, how old are your children, by the way? Uh, one is uh, one one year and uh, four months, and uh, the the older the older child will soon be three years old. Okay, well, tell me honestly, have you started teaching the older child Go? Are you no, I gave the Go stones to play, and uh, they like to take the stones and to throw them in the bowl and to to throw them around. Now that when you are married and you have two kids. Do you think it's it's more difficult to combine like to combine being your uh, a, a go professional and being a family guy or how do you manage this? Well, it's it's not that easy, but uh, I manage somehow. I, I work on the European Go Journal mostly in nights. So du during the day, I, I help my my wife with kids, and then after they sleep, my my working time she usually starts around nine o'clock in the evening or sometimes even later so yeah oh, wow. I, i'm very happy that i that i have this kind of project that uh, i can choose the time that i i can dedicate to it so i am not attached to some exact time and um, i can choose if i work in night or if i work in day sometimes and i can be flexible about it yeah but so uh, mostly mostly i work in nights and uh, i when i go to tournament we invite somebody to help with the kids for example my mother but uh, you know it's it's quite stressful when you when you don't live with a person and kids don't live with a person and then you invite this person yeah and uh, especially there is a language barrier between uh, but like my, my mother she doesn't really talk english and uh, so it's hard for her to talk with with my wife so so going to a tournament is always very very stressful for my family oh wait but, uh, your wife is not ukrainian no, she's from Romania. Oh, I, I didn't. I, I, I kind of presumed. I just presumed that it was, she, she was Ukrainian. Oh, so you speak English in the family? Uh, yes, we speak English. Well, that's a, that's a difficult family. Oh, that, uh, it's because, because Anton was asking before, uh, how did you learn English? Did you learn English from like writing articles? But now I see that, well, the answer is also that you, well, you have to speak to your wife. Uh, somebody is asking, um, do you have any favorite books? maybe some books that you would recommend yes uh, i can say that um, when i was uh, approximately at level of one done i started watching more of professional games and i started to read books in which uh, professionals are commenting on uh, their own games so these are my favorite kind of books because uh, such books uh, can give an insight into thinking of professional player like he can explain why he chose this variant or the other and uh, also sometimes they were um, like talking about uh, their feeling before the game, how they how they felt psychologically. So uh, I enjoyed these books very much. And uh, the, those books were uh, Japanese books from 80s, from Rin Kaiho or oh. Take Hideo. In English? Shiba and I would say that I grew from first dan till four dan just, just on these books. And I, I had maybe five different books like that. And I read each of them three or four times. So even even let's say one of uh, one, one of the things that I like to do is I had these five books and I read them one by one and then I again start the cycle from the first book. So so I enjoyed a lot uh, professional uh, commenting on their own games and I would say that this is my favorite kind of books. Who is your favorite pro if you have any? In the past I used to have uh, like um, some favorite professional and it was uh, different in different period but nowadays uh, there are so, so many strong players and they are of uh, so similar levels that and and i can't say that uh, they have very different styles so so it's really hard to pick uh, one professional who would be my favorite but uh, i know that uh, stanislav frerak said that i am his favorite professional so i will say that stanislav frerak is my oh. favorite professional oh <laughs> that's so cute yeah what is your now that you are second down professional and uh, well, EDI is like four done. So what is, what is the goal right now? Like now that you are already European professional, what can you try to achieve next? What, what is the possible next step? Like three done, professional, four done, king of the world, <laughs> what next? 
Well, you, you know, these uh, ranks are, are just numbers. So I don't, I am not attached to ranks, but uh, w- what I would uh, really like is uh, to have uh, to have more opportunities to play against Asian professionals. And uh, of course, my dream is to, to reach their level and to compete with them in the tournaments. Who is your toughest opponent? Do you have a, a rival, maybe? You, you mean in Europe? Okay, well, probably. Uh, well, yes. We, now, nowadays, anyway, we play only in Europe. Yeah. So, so I think my biggest rival is Ilya. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is also a question that is easy to answer. We, we played with him in the final of European Championship. And uh, last year, we played in the final of European Grand Prix final. So, yes, we, we played so many finals with him. <laughs> so many finals, yeah. So, but but you've played so many games already. Mm-hmm. So he knows your style, you know his style, you know yes. what he's going to do. Uh, so what is, your, like, what is your mental preparation when you're going to play against him? Like, like every time you play, what, is your, like, what, what do you think about? What's your plan? Well, what? It's, uh, it's uh, the same as against any other player. I, I just try to play, the, um, um, I don't know, to keep, to keep the um, psychological balance, like... Um, you know, you know, during tournament, it's uh, sometimes it's not easy because let's say you play in the final and you are playing for I don't know in the final of Grand Slam for five thousand euro, for example. So it's not so easy to to stay calm during the game. And uh, yeah, that that is a separate story. So <laughs> playing against Ilya for me is uh, psychologically is it's not different than playing against the other players. Mm. Artem, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, I really hope that you uh, accept our invitation one day and uh, we'll see you live here in, uh, in Georgia. You come here with the family with a little vacation and uh, we'll do some amazing course together. That would be great. All right. Thanks everyone for attention.